I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I often get asked, how can I make my formula more natural or organic, or completely natural and organic? So I thought today I'd provide you with a video with several hints, tips and tricks to help you make your formulas natural and organic. Please remember, this is just giving you some tips and tricks about the types of ingredients that you shouldn't be using and those which you can, as well as how to formulate a natural and organic product in general. But of course, all formulas need to be put together properly and tested out in the lab to make sure they're safe, stable and suitable. But let's look at those tips and tricks and hopefully it gives you lots of ideas so you can get creating your formulas fast. Remember too, we have our Create Cosmetic Formulas program, so if you don't wanna learn or experiment, and you wanna make sure that every formula works so you can stop wasting ingredients, we have our Create Cosmetic Formulas organic program. And this program actually does all of the organic compositional calculations for you, so you get the formulas right every single time. But if you wanna create the formulas yourself, and you want some of these great tips, tricks, and ingredient substitutions, this is the video for you. Now one of the first overarching principles of certified organic products is that they must contain at least 20% organic ingredients when they're a leave-on product or an emulsion type form. This organic import can be as low as 10% when it's a wash-off product. But you must have at least this much organic portion to claim the product is organic. In addition, wherever the ingredient is available as an organic version, you must use the organic version. So for example, you can't use regular almond oil or regular glycerin. You must use organic almond oil or organic glycerin. So let's look at some other ingredient substitutions and specifically what is not okay and what you can use instead. First, let's talk about gums. Now, you definitely can't use carbamer, acrylate, or polymer type materials, but there's lots of natural gums out there you can choose from. Now, in particular, from your smallest suppliers, you can readily source acacia gum, xanthan gum, bentonite, salsafinia, spinosa gum, or solar gum tara, carrageenan gum, guar gum, sclerotian gum, also known as amigel, xanthan gum, and a xanthan gum, lecithin, sclerotium gum, pulalin combination known as silly gel. You'll need to be really careful about the inputs of guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride and hydroxyethyl cellulose or methyl cellulose materials if you want to claim the product as organic and certify it with Cosmos. You can only use 2% petrochemical moiety that is present in the guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride or the hydroxyethyl cellulose. But if you wanna claim that product is 100% natural, then you shouldn't be using either of these materials at all. Next, let's talk about humectants. So if you want to create an organic product, you can't use propylene glycol. Just remember, this doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the can't use ingredients. It just means you can't use them in an organic product and claim it as natural or organic. And you can't take it to a certifier and hope for certification. But other humectants you can use include organic glycerin and propane diol. Next, with oil, lipid or emollient choices, you can't use your mineral oils or silicones. Again, there's nothing wrong with these ingredients, but if you want to claim a product is all natural or get it certified organic, then you can't use these ingredients in any amount. You can, however, still use a variety of organic oils, organic butters, organic waxes, and remember where the organic version exists, you must use the organic form, not just the natural plant form. And there is also a variety of natural esters that you can use, like isoamyl laurate and cococaprylate. And there is, of course, caprylic capric triglycerides. When it comes to choosing fragrances, all of your synthetic fragrances are absolutely prohibited. Again, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with a synthetic fragrance, you just can't use them in a natural product or one that you want to get certified organic. You can, however, use organic essential oils and remember where the organic form of the oil exists, you must use it. This can be a little tricky and compromise your price point. Or you can use natural fragrances that use only isolates or fractionations 
from natural essential oils. Speak to your fragrance supplier. There are some great natural fragrance options available with better stability, higher substantivity, and better shelf life and price stability than using organic essential oils alone. When it comes to choosing emulsifiers, you need to avoid all ethoxylated materials or pegs, as well as emulsifiers that end in ETH, because that usually means they're ethoxylated as well. Again, there's nothing wrong with these ingredients, they just cannot be used in organic products in any amount. But when it comes to emulsifiers, you have loads of other choices. You can pick from any of the emulsifiers that you see on this screen, and all of these are readily available from your small suppliers, and some of them have some outstanding sensory and stability attributes in your formulations. When it comes to choosing surfactants, there is quite a big no list. Again, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with any of these materials, they just simply cannot be used in organic formulas in any amount. You'll need to also be careful with certain ingredients like cocomida propylbutane, for example, and there's a few other limited materials as well. Again, if you're going to certify your product with Cosmos, you'll need to limit their input to 2% petrochemical moieties. And of course, if you want to claim that your product is 100% natural, then you should not be using these materials in any amount because they do have a synthetic portion. There is thankfully a longer list becoming available of surfactants that you can use in certified organic formulas. And you'll see these on the screen. Now, when it comes to solubilizers, we have similar limitations. You cannot use any sorts of polysorbate or peg oil materials as your solubilizers, which limits some of the performance. But I've got some great videos showing you how the different natural solubilizers that you are permitted to use perform under different formula conditions. So please watch those videos. I've got a total of three videos, so there's lots of natural surfactants you can choose from. And you can also pick and choose to see which ones will work best with the fragrance or essential oil combinations that you want to include in your formulation, as well as those which you can access readily. Now, when it comes to picking preservatives, this is definitely one of the most controversial choices you'll ever have to make when you're formulating. And a lot of the preservatives that are permitted in organic products aren't actually natural. Many of them are what we call nature identical. And this means they're identical to the way they would occur in nature. But for commercial reasons, we can only purchase the synthetic versions. So if you are using any of these nature identical or synthetic preservatives in an organic product, you technically can't claim the product is 100% natural or organic because the preservatives are synthetic in many cases. So definitely check that before you make the claim and be aware that just because the preservatives are on the permitted list doesn't mean they're natural or organic. Of course, there's some obvious preservatives you need to avoid, but we do have a growing list of reliable preservatives you can use in your organic products. Just be careful of the final pH. A lot of these preservatives prefer a more acidic environment to work, which means if you put them into a formula where they have a slightly higher or more neutral pH, you may not get the performance required. And finally, active ingredients. Just be careful with your active ingredients. Some of them contain solvents that are not permitted in organic products or may contain very small amounts of preservatives to maintain their shelf life over a long time. Obviously, organic herbal extracts or organic extracts or organic actives are perfectly fine to use in organic formulations. And a lot of your herbal extracts may also be suitable where the solvent used to create that product is also a permitted ingredient. But just be careful because the amount of natural extract you use compared to organic extract may impact the final composition and determine whether that formula can be certified organic or not. There is a rule that a minimum of 95% of your agro ingredients must be certified organic. So if you have a really high active herbal input that is not organic, you could be breaking this rule. But if the rest of your formula has a lot of organic ingredients, and in fact, if you replace a lot of your water with an organic aloe vera or organic hydrosol, 
you'll usually find you have such a high organic input that the use of non-organic but natural herbal actives may not be a problem with this compositional requirement. Now, of course, the compositional requirements does involve a lot of mathematical calculations. And if you don't feel like you're ready for that, but you still wanna create certified organic formulas, head over to createcosmeticformulas.com and pick the organic version of the program because I've made this program to do the calculations for you and make sure that every formula you create will comply with the organic certifiers rules to Cosmos standards. So you can stop wasting ingredients because every formula works. And of course, if you're formulating using your own formulation principles and choosing your ingredients for yourself, hopefully this video has given you loads of tips, tricks and substitute ingredients to solve your issues when you're trying to formulate natural and organic. And of course, you can always study advanced certificate or diploma options with us to learn how to formulate professionally. I hope you found this video useful. Please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.